On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks are all away. None of them were at home to play against the Milwaukee Bucks, nor am I at home to do this podcast. But we will trudge, we will trudge on Isaac Harris. The Mavs were 10 players down, but we're going strong as a pod. And it was a fun game. Marquise Chris had a big impact in this one. We'll talk about him and his future with the Mavs. We'll talk about that coming up on today's Lockdown Mavs. Fun. So then, Chich, and this is Lockdown Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. don't believe you shouldn't be here and welcome you are locked on to the dallas mavericks my name is nick angstead media member and nba channel manager at the locked on podcast network thanks for making locked on maps your first listen every single day we are free and available on all platforms including youtube where you can see us right now and see me obviously not at home i am visiting family in Florida right now, this is the most Florida place I think I could be in right now with these these uh, blinds and the those oh, that red solo cup there with the with the national drink of Florida, like the national beverage uh, receptacle of Florida, the red solo cup right here, full of water. Wow. I, I will let everyone know. I feel like you should listen to country right now. <laughs> um, then we're gonna go fishing. <laughs> and joining me as always, my co-host, contributor, writer at Mavs.com. <laughs> the next up uber the one more thinking what you got for me isaac harris well thanks for the loyal listeners being back we we missed a day during the middle of the week and it was like groundbreaking because we we haven't we don't miss days in the middle of the week no days off for lockdown no maps. days off uh <laughs> shout out to the person who tweeted at us and said but wait that means i have to talk to my son on the way to school <laughs> I loved that one. That and I'm like, cool. oh, crap, bro. Real <laughs> moment. Uh, but uh, no, thanks for everyone listening. I need it. I mean, I'm trying to figure out if I'm I'm like sick, but I don't know. Do I need to be in protocols right now? But <laughs> I was say, <laughs> Nick I'm is traveling. traveling. Isaac is sick. The, the, the Locked On Mavs podcast is just about the same status as the Dallas Mavericks right now. Everyone is out and about. The Mavericks lost this game 102 to 95 against the Milwaukee Bucks with Middleton. Drew Holiday, like the Bucks had a decent amount of their complement of players. Giannis obviously didn't play in this one. Brooke, Brooke Lopez still out. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo still out for them and all that. But uh, the Dallas Mavericks going to uh, the AAC, starting Jalen Brunson, Frank Nilakina, Dorian Finney-Smith, Sterling Brown, and Dwight Powell again. Second game in a row, we're seeing the exact same starting lineup. And then literally the rest of the roster was just guys that had signed within the last 48 hours and Moses Brown. <laughs> yeah. So we, you know, we obviously didn't do a pod yesterday and that's when they announced, you know, they announced a few days ago that Luca had entered protocols. Trey Burke had entered protocols guys. I, I think we're all in the same spot right now. It's like wondering when everybody's going to be available to play. You know, yeah. you guys are reading the same things we are with, you know, Woj and them tweeting out that the and, NAPA. And literally Jason Kidd is doing the same thing. During the game, they mentioned that, you know, on, on NBA TV, they mentioned they talked to Jason Kidd before their, you know, their pre-show meeting or whatever. And Jason Kidd said, the first thing I do every day is I wake up and I check my phone to see who is available and who's not, right? Like, we're all doing the same yeah. thing. Even the head coach of the team, he obviously gets the information before us, but we're waiting on it. And then after the game, Jason Kidd had an interesting thing to say. If you're curious about the Christmas Day games, which are coming tomorrow, if you're listening to watching this on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve, shout out to everybody. Have a happy holidays to everyone listening. Uh, but Jason Kidd said that uh, we need to see who clears protocol tonight or tomorrow to see who will play on Christmas. And I don't think he's talking about the guys that are out right now. I think he's talking about the guys that played tonight to see who will be able to play on Christmas, right? Like, cause we're still waiting. I think all the guys that are out right now in health and safety protocols are all going to be out for Christmas. I, I don't see I, I don't, a, a I don't scenario know. when all of them are out. Like well, any of them we come gotta, back. We got to see what this new thing that's passed is like, if that, if, if, it's, that thing if it's drastically... six days, then maybe Reggie and Josh Green can come back. But like, I was going to say, Luca, Luca's not coming back. Tim Hardaway's not coming back for Christmas at least. Yeah. I, I think, will there be a couple players come back? Maybe. I don't know. We just got to see what this new update is before we say all of them. I mean, that's 10 players. Not all 10 of them are in health and safety protocols. You know, before yeah. the game, you know, Porzingis was a game time decision warmed up before the game. And then, you know, he set out with the toe stuff. So 
hopefully he's back on Christmas at least, where at least makes it. And that's probably their approach to it of like, hey, all right, let's uh, let's just set him one more game. Let's get him ready for you know for Christmas night, as we'll at least have you know one of our star players out there. But it was the classic. We might as well punt on this game too. What right? Like, but they, but here's <laughs> I tweeted this out. I went back and forth on how to word this because I'm. I'm sure this will come across as like a shot to like the everyday Mavs, but I think it's more of a league wide thing. There's been a, an ongoing conversation for years now about the regular season and how the regular season's boring. It doesn't mean anything. The players kind of mail it in half the time and whatever, however you want to feel about it. There are the, players defining who, teams for resting players and stuff like that. Yes. On, the re- you know, resting, national TV games. Exactly. So you see that you kind of get accustomed to that. And like, I mean, we watch every single minute, every single regular season game. And like, whether you like to admit or not, there are teams that, I mean, there are times in games that players, they're not fully in it, you know, and they're not fully given it all. And it's like, it's part of it. But with this like season that we're in right now, these few weeks that's going for the Mavs and other teams, the season matters for most, for a lot of these guys, like the careers are on the line right now. And it was, it's kind of like refreshing. I don't even know if refreshing is the right word. It's kind of like cool, like jolting a little bit, watching a game to where, you know, three to four guys out there in a lineup are trying with everything inside of them because their career and their livelihood is on the line. Like Marquise Chris, after the game is sitting there saying, I thought I was going to be spending Christmas with my family for the first time since high school. But now I'm like blessed to be playing with the Mavs and back in the league and all this. It's like, it's just crazy seeing just the effort, the hustle, the everything that we're not used to seeing on a Thursday night in December in the regular season. And that's why I say this game was fun, right? You gave me a little, you gave me a little uh, snarky, like, I mean, fun is a little, when you said uh, this game wasn't fun, but I I enjoyed it. I thought that it was fun for that reason, because, and let's get into it. Marquise Chris, I thought is, has been somewhat of a revelation for this team where you're saying, okay, a guy like that, that can move his feet. That's a big, that can stick with somebody that can uh, finish that reverse dunk that he finished. What was that in the third quarter? That's Uh, nice. Was a nice one, right? It's like one of the most athletic plays nice we've pass seen too this, from Frank. this season. Great pass from Frank. Uh, the connection that he and, and Frank have a couple of those pick and rolls, um, side pick and rolls even too, not just like straight up and down, but a couple of those plays that we've seen from him have been really, really good and things that, that stand out. And it, he's somebody that the Mavericks don't necessarily have, even though they should have him with Dwight and with Willie, but they, do, they don't have those guys right now. Marquise Chris is just a, a little bit, more athletic than those guys and a little bit stronger than those guys. And it stands out right now. It's on you guys listening right now to decide whether Marquise Chris standing out is an indictment on the Mavericks current rotation of starting centers, or if it is uh, a positive towards Marquise Chris, you guys get to decide that, but, but it has been fun to watch and he has been pretty good for him. Yeah. I think, you know, going into these games, it's so hard. I was, I joked and I texted you before and I was going to tweet it out, but you know, somebody would get mad it was like i think we should just collect i'll say it right here i don't care i think we should just collectively go into these games like the fan base and be like all right let's all handshake and agree that we're not going to get mad about anything like basketball wise for these (laughs) games okay because it's just so hard to like learn anything basketball from these games but i think the one uh, one of the few things that i am like looking for is i think everybody's looking for it is will one of these guys pop well, one of these guys yeah. show enough that <clears throat> warrants them being on the team past their 10 day contract or another 10 day, or will it warrant a, you know, I thought something very, very telling post game Marquise Chris is asked by Callie Kaplan. <clears throat> Sorry, cough, no cough button. Um, she asked him, how, how did you get to the Mavs? Shout out to when I had like a chronic cough for like two years of this Dude, podcast. I thought about that, that the other day. I was like, I, I had too. a cough for the first two years of this pod. And I thought by the third one, I was going to be doing it solo. And everybody, and like people would like Dan say, Hey bro, do you, do you like, there's medicine that you can, <laughs> I'm a doctor. Are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? Um, but she asked Marquis Chris, like, when did you know you're going to be a Maverick? And how did that like happen? And what did he say? He's like, I actually worked out for the Mavs. Like, a handful of weeks, two weeks ago. ago. Yeah. So like now, obviously they can see the league, you know, COVID stuff. They probably start working out players and stuff, but what if, what if it's a, Hey, we're entertaining, you know, some certain deals out there. We're entertaining some roster moves that could create some open roster spots. Let's start working out some players and seeing who could be a, a guy we could bring in. And so far Marquise, Chris, 
I love Theo Pinson. I think Theo has stood out too, and we'll talk about him on this pod. But I think Marquise Chris has been the guy that has really popped the most. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Marquise Chris, especially because of the weakness the Mavericks have had at the center position. So coming up, let's get into these guys. Let's talk about how the Mavericks ended up dropping this game because the Mavericks were leading this game for a lot of the time. There are some good things we saw from them, but we'll talk about that. But before we do, let me tell you about Truebill. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't want, need, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Companies make subscriptions hard for you to cancel. There's always just one that you just forget about and it just hides in your like bank statement and you don't realize that it's there. Truebill is there to help you stop that and to help you save money. Your Truebill concierge is there for you when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash NBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash NBA. It could save you thousands of dollars a year. Go to Truebill.com slash NBA to check it out right now. Start canceling your subscriptions that you don't need and even negotiate some of the ones that you want to keep but already have. Truebill.com slash NBA. All right. I also want to tell you about Built Bar, Isaac Harris. I had a Built Bar on the plane on the way here. It's a great travel snack. One of the one of the best travel snacks I think that I've ever come across because after you eat it, you don't feel bad. Like you eat another bar that may be named after like uh, a mountainside. You know what I mean? If you ever had one of those bars, after you eat it, you just you don't feel that good after eating it. You're like, ah, oh, why did I eat that? I'm not really mm-hmm. into this. There's a bar about being like nice to people. That bar. After you eat it, you're like, it didn't feel like I ate anything after you eat it. There's a whole bunch of other bars that you can just start naming, but Built Bar is the one that'll stick around. Built Bar is the one that'll make you feel good after you eat it. They're absolutely delicious. Go to Built.com. They have new bars coming out all the time. You have to check it out multiple times to be able to see what kind of bars they have available and what flavors they have. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your next bar. The candy cane brownie bites are legitimately really good. Isaac, remember when we built bar first sent us those candy cane bars and we were like, Oh, it was like one of the first bars we ever had for built bar. And we said, Oh dang, this is actually really good. Really good. Yeah. Really good. (laughs) Actual candy cane pieces on top of it. And they're pretty good for you. You're not going to have to worry about adding up those calories on around Christmas. So check it out. Built.com promo code locked 15. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into this game. The Dallas Mavericks fall to the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, 102 to 95. The Mavericks, I thought, put up a really good fight in this game. And it's two games in a row now where they just don't have anybody, right? Luka didn't play. You mentioned Porzingis didn't play because of the toe injury. Tim Hardaway out. Reggie Bullock out. Um, Maxi. Maxi Kleba is out. Like, Trey Burke is out. Willie Colley Stein is still out with personal reasons. Uh, Eugene Omarui had surgery on his foot and is out. Ja'Cory McLaughlin was a, a late scratch, and he's out for health and safety protocol. So both of the two-way guys are out for the Dallas Mavericks. But they go into this game. And the Mavericks fought really hard in this one. And it's almost one of those games, if you're a Mavs fan, I think you feel pride in this team finally, right? Like the whole year, I think you've gone through this. And we went through, I think it was on Monday, we did the pod about why Mavs fans have been, some Mavs fans have been really frustrated and basically lost faith in this team. And I think after these two games, you start to really feel some pride for a guy like Jalen Brunson that's stepping up and a guy like Dorian Finney-Smith that's really stepping into this moment and taking over some some plays and some quarters and being able to do a little bit more off the dribble and defend a little bit more. Um, now, neither of those guys shot incredibly well in this game, but not a lot of yeah. people did. Um, both teams what shot like under 30% from three. Uh, so this was not like the best shooting performance on, for any team in this one. But I think you start feeling some pride in some of these guys. And... Then you also have Frank Nilakina, who's showing some flashes, and he's 23 years old. You see Marquise Chris come in and show some flashes. He's 24 years old. The, the Mavericks all of a sudden have some younger guys that can that are infusing some fun, some energy, some just an injection of talent into this team that the Mavericks have needed it for years and now are finally getting it just a little bit here. We're getting a taste of it. Well, yes. I, I wouldn't go as far as saying like an injection of like huge talent as far as like this isn't like life changing talent. Like once all the guys, come, any, they're not answering any questions, right? But they're just, it's given. It's becoming a little interesting, right? Like it's just yeah, something. yeah, yeah. And that's why I I can't help to watch these games. Like, dang it, I wish Josh Green was out there. Like, I, I know. Of course, you wish Luca and all the other guys were out there, but it's like I almost wish if you could take like one guy and like 
besides Luca, I'm like, can we just put Josh Grant, these young guys? Just- you remember remember last season when the Mavericks had all those guys that got they got COVID and had to stay back in that Denver hotel for what was it like a month? They had to yeah. stay in that hotel in Denver. Josh, th- that was the only time last year that Josh Green actually got some real playing time. And here we are again with this almost the same thing happening and Josh Green not being with them and him actually being one of the ones that got that, that uh, tested positive for COVID. And so, uh, yeah, it is really unfortunate for him to not be able to be in this group. And you got to also, if we're going to p- point out some of these young guys, Moses Brown is getting passed up a little bit by some guys that have a little bit more experience than Marquise Chris. And uh, I guess that's it. Just Marquise Chris right now. <laughs> and, but, but and, I mean, and then going small, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, it is real that, they're choosing to play Marquise Chris over Moses Brown right now. Like, I mean, that's, yeah. that's something we talked about the other night when he went with Marquise Chris over Dwight Powell late. And, but like Moses is coming off the bench too. And he's playing over Moses. So, I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I was, I think the only coaching thing that I was a little confused by is, you know, Boogie was kind of just doing whatever he wanted down low. And I think I would at least tried Boban at least once, but and like I get they would have torched him in the pick and roll and stuff, but they try would've. Boban back up and let Boogie shoot a three because Boogie's shooting 22% from three this year. So just put throw Bo- Boban out there and just back up and say, hey, hey, I dare you to shoot a three. If not, then I'll at least try to put my hand up on you down low. Yeah, a listener pointed that out to me. And, and I said to him, I said, I think – but like Boogie just would have dribbled around Boban the same way he did against Marquise Chris, like in the first half. There was a play yeah, where just back up. Boogie just like dribble. No, but you can't though. Like if if you catch if you get Boogie dare him out, to shoot a three, do what people do say, to Russell Westbrook. He's shooting twenty two percent from three. That's what they should have. But if he if he catches around like fifteen feet, then Boban's up against up, up against him, and then he just dribbles around him. It, it they they could have tried it for sure. I, I I think you're right about that. They could have tried it, but um. But yeah, DeMarcus Cousins only plays well against the Mavericks, apparently. I think Bobby Corrala tweeted out that he's only had two 20-point games in the past two seasons, and both of them have been against the Mavericks. <laughs> but, but, but I think there's a little bit of it of like, that's probably the game plan of like, if you're Jason Kidd in a sense of, we talked about the you know the opposing teams like, oh, I dare you to throw it down to Boban. Like if you're Kidd, who, what would you rather have? Boogie catching it in the post or Chris Middleton or Drew Holiday torching you? So it's probably kind of a little got in mouse with this of like, okay, you got the mismatch, then you better give it to Boogie. Now, he had 20-some points, but still, you can almost kind of live with that. Start of the third quarter, I wrote this. Mavs and Bucks playing a game of, is Boogie more of a weakness on defense or a strength on offense? And that was the whole <laughs> game right there, right? Like, there are certain moments in this game where you're like, okay, we're going to go at Boogie Cousins, and we're going to get Dwight to finish around him because he's faster than him. And then on the other end, Boogie's like, okay, you're going to do that. I'm just going to push you and ma- literally push Dwight over one. There was one play where he just pushed oh. Dwight and he fell down. It wasn't even a charge Oof. or anything. Like, just literally mm. pushed him out of the way. And um, and then he finished around him. And so they, they were playing that game. But uh, I think Boogie won that game. The, the game of is he more <laughs> of a liability on defense or a, a, a po- positive on offense? He had 22 well, points, eight boards, four assists and only three fouls and Marquise Chris fouled out in 13 minutes. So, and, and why, why did he, why did he win that? Because it's what we've talked about the other night. They don't have a, a guy who can just ISO it out and say, we, I got this. Like I will just, to I will take keep... advantage of the mismatch. Exactly. Yeah, right. And even like, you know, Brunson late in the game, he struggled there with the last few possessions of his, but I mean, he was pushing on, you know, 39, 40 minutes in this game. I mean, even Jason Kidd said post game, he said, He's, you know, he's playing past his limit in minutes right now. And I know some old school people are listening to the pod saying, who cares? <laughs> you know, 39 minutes, just play. But if a guy is used to a certain amount of minutes playing that all all the time, it is kind of a change up for him to be late in the game. And he's kind of gassed. Yeah, Jason. Yeah. I thought Jason Kidd pointing that out was interesting. My, I'm I'm recording this, like, and the, my, my laptop is sitting on the bed and my wife is like sleeping on the other side of this laptop. <laughs> She she looked up and gave me a look, but uh, Jason Kidd saying that after the game was really interesting. I noted that too, where he said that you know they're playing past their minutes limits is the the way he worded it, and I found found that interesting. I wonder if they have certain caps to guys because they want to keep them healthy. And look, this is the same thing we said about Luca two years ago when the Mavericks were terrible in cl- in the, in the, in crunch time, right? Any anytime the Mavericks would get a clutch loss, it would be 
Well, Luca has to carry this huge offensive load, and then by the end of his 40 minutes that he plays in the game, he's just done. It doesn't have it. And we saw that exact thing with Jalen Brunson in this game, right? He's not used to carrying the offense. And give – Props to Drew Holiday, who is our number one on the board as far as players we'd love to see play next to Luca. I think we've talked about him for like four years now, but he like he made I love that guy. Jay, he made Jalen Brunson's life miserable tonight on offense. It was just absolutely hounding him. And uh, one of the reasons why the Mavericks lost this game is because Brunson couldn't get the things going that he really wanted to until later. And by then, he was out of gas. I thought Nilakina played at least decent defense on on drew on the other end yeah he did but but what drew has a post game as a guard that not all guards have and drew started going to that he's such a smart player and i yeah i just get jealous because i want Drew on the maps <laughs> don't we all don't we all want drew holiday <laughs> on the maps we've been saying that for a while but it would have taken like four first round picks to get him which is do what it. the bucks decided what the bucks decided to do all right coming up Let's talk about some of the other guys on the roster, how they play. Let's talk about Theo Pinson jacking up some threes. Let's talk about Frank Nilakina and the contributions he had. Let's talk about some of these other guys, how they showed up, and what you can expect for Christmas Day. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about betonline.ag. They have you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues to march its way through college bowl season and the pro football playoffs. So much stuff happening right now. There is multiple NFL games on Christmas Day. There is multiple uh, NBA games on Christmas Day that you can bet on. And if you want to, go to betonline.ag. Use the promo code LOCKDOWN. You'll get a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Isaac Harris, let's get into some of these other players. You mentioned Frank Nilkina, and I wanted to have a little bit of a, a conversation about him because um, – he did not shoot the ball well at all, right? Five my, of man, my man had that Tim Hardaway green light. <laughs> two, two of ten. He's the starting shooting guard. He's like, okay, Say, shooting I got guard. This. I will, I will shoot the ball. That is what I will do. I will go shoot the ball. Uh, two of ten from three. But I thought he had some really good moments in this game. Him and Marquise Chris hooking up in the pick and roll, I thought was was really really good. We're starting to see a little bit more playmaking from Frank Nilakina and the defense. The defense was really good from him on Drew Holiday. And he's only 23 years old. I want to stress that again, that the Mavericks have this guy now that is younger, was the eighth, ninth, was the eighth pick in the NBA draft, has some talent, has some upside. And uh, and it's exciting for for the Mavs to have a guy like this. And I hope he hope he sticks around in the rotation a little bit longer than he did the first time around this season. Yeah, Devin Harris um, on the broadcast tonight with Mark Follow. Uh, shout out to Devin saying that Grayson Allen had uh, sneaky athleticism. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Devin, Devin was talking about Frank and he, wait, can we talk about Grayson Allen just kicked Theo Pinson like right in the nuts again this game? I was like, that's because he's a Carolina guy. I know it. <laughs> You're a dookie and you like to kick. I know. It was like so perfect that he did it. He kicked him right in the nuts. Got the, got the basket. Didn't get called for the foul and just went on his way. I'm not going to talk trash about any Duke players anymore because JJ Redick was like the full circle of I hated him in college and then he became a Mav. So then I had to like keep my mouth shut. <laughs> um, but Frank Nilakina, um, missed eight threes tonight. Like you said, five, five 16 from the field. He, when Devin was talking about him, he referenced his New York days and how he, he's like, man, he's just, he's way more free now. And I think that's the thing of like, you watch it. He felt so more, much restricted in New York. And now he's just, he's doing his thing. Now I get that freedom <laughs> allows for a lot more mistakes, but it looks, it looks a little bit more comfortable out there, like displaying a few more things. You know what? They said that exact same thing on the NBA TV broadcast that I was watching. It was Brendan Haywood and Spear Adidas was the play by play. And then they had Greg Anthony chime in every once in a while. And they said the exact same thing about Frank Nilakina about his playing days in New York and how he's playing more free now. And I wonder who told them that, right? Like, did it was it Frank that told them that in a pre-show meeting? Was it Jason Kidd that told them that in I a think pre-show they just meeting? See it. Is it is it that obvious that that both of those guys obvious. saw it, or that somebody told them that thing? Because that that sounds really that's really interesting to me. They would both say the exact same thing. Well, I feel like it's a different role too. I feel like in New York now, granted, I, it's not like I watch every single Knicks game, but I feel like in New York it was more of a three and D type of role. And in Dallas, they're almost kind of forcing him into another ball handler role. So like he's actually running pick and rolls and driving and kicking and all this stuff. Well, and Dallas has their Dallas has their guys, and I saw a couple people tweet this out. Why did the Mavericks always have? you know, Dwight Powell or the center, whoever at the top of the key and try to make a play, right? Why does he always, why does 
centers get the ball in their hands up top to make a play. And it's because the way the offense runs, it's sort of a read and react offense in the way that, okay, you get your first action with the pick and roll or the double drag or something like that with the main lead ball handler. And if that doesn't work, or if it does work, you drive, you kick. Then if that defender rotates over to you, you got to make a decision. You got to do something. And so they try to do all the stuff. They try to dribble handoffs at the top of the key with the centers. And now with Frank Nelikina, you got to make that decision. You got to do this. It's not just, okay, well, you don't have like you don't have an open shot. Kick it back to Randall so he can ISO and <laughs> you know, yeah. do that stuff again, right? So they're asking him to do a little bit more. And now with Luca out, it's okay, Frank, do do a little bit for us. Do a little bit more for us. Run a pick and roll with Marquise Chris. Do a little bit of this. And so he's getting more opportunity in that way too because guys are out. And so I think that's been good for Frank. It's been good to see him out there play some defense. Uh, the shot's got to come around for him. That's real big. That's real big for his game because you don't, you don't want playmaking to be the main thing that Frank Nilakina does on offense, right? It should be that catch and shoot three type stuff. You don't want to yeah. have to ask him to, all right, you have to have the ball in your hands in order to be positive on offense, right? The, the threes have to get fallen for him. And he hit a couple in this game, but he also missed eight. So <laughs> everybody uh, missed threes in this game. Speaking of missing three, well, the Mavericks missed 33 threes in this game. Um, <laughs> You tweeted something about Sterling Brown in the fourth quarter, and I just want to push back a little bit and just ask you, who do you want shooting it? I, don't I know. Mind, it's, I don't mind I, him shooting the three. Like, go ahead, bro. I know. Like, it's not I was, like there's I was poking snipers Sterling, out there. I know. I was poking fun at Sterling Brown because he took another really rushed, like early in the shot clock three in the fourth quarter. And I said, anytime Sterling Brown takes a, a fourth quarter three, it takes 10 minutes off of the lifespan of an MFFL. But like it's the type of shots that he takes in the fourth quarter. Like the threes that Sterling Brown takes in the fourth quarter are these like, okay, the 24 second clock starts and it's not even like 19 by the time that he takes the three and he just forces it. The, the one he took tonight was contested. Um, but yeah, uh, Sterling Brown, Sterling Brown is, is has over the last couple of games has shown he's a really good rebounder and he always has the ball in the transition. And it, yeah. that's, that's frustrating he, me. Too he, re, he, I love when a guy can rebound the basketball, especially a wing can rebound and take off. And the he thing, does the that. Thing a is lot. Though, where, the thing is though, where do you want him to take off too? Cause he finishes all the take. He like, he takes off, right? He does. He grabs the ball and he takes off and he finishes at the three point line on the other side and then can't get to the rim. Can't, you know, pass in transition. Like there's just, there's he some had limitations one play tonight to that. Where he, he scored with the and one, but I get what you're saying. He did bro. have that one. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I just want to. I don't really have too much to say about anybody else Oop, except what for what did you what did you see from Pinson? Except for Theo, and you know he hit a couple threes early. Hit three threes in this game. He was the only guy in this game to hit three threes. And um, I, I just feel like I'm biased about him, but I really hope he sticks around. I like him. I like his energy. Uh, you see him talking a lot on the bench. He's always. I mean, that's just been his thing. And I really, really hope he sticks around. The more stuff I've read about him, he is a player that everyone in the locker room loves. Like in yes. New York, in Brooklyn, like everyone loves him in the locker room. And you just love a guy like that. Um, and yeah, I, I hope he sticks around too. He had four fouls really quick in this game. And, uh, you know, he's getting taken advantage of by Middleton and Holiday. We're just taking advantage of a lot of people in this game. But yeah, I mean, uh, so good. but yeah, his passing stood out again in this game, how he just gets it out quickly and just makes things happen. Um, uh, the other guys, the other new guys, Brandon Knight. I honestly didn't. I don't. I mean, I don't like to make snap judgments about guys. More than in nine less, minutes, nine minutes less of play. Than, in less than ten minutes of play, but I'm not sure about Brandon. Like, I'm not sure it's there for Brandon Knight right now. Yeah, I want to give him a couple, a couple more games. I mean, we saw a little bit of Brandon Knight, a little bit of Carly Jones. We've seen you know him before. Obviously, George King played four. Uh, Charlie Brown's just waiting for Christmas to play, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's that's about it on that. That's about it on that. Um, yeah, there you go. That's that's the Bucks game. Dallas Mavericks will play on Christmas Day against the Utah Jazz. Hopefully, we get all, KP in that game. I was gonna say that's their only hope right now for like another starter to jo rejoin the team. And, hey, let let me ask you this: If we are three weeks from now, or two weeks from now, so like mid January, the Marquise Chris contracts up. How shocked are you if they wave Moses Brown and keep him? <laughs> And keep Marquise Chris. Well, we have a Mavs Twitter meltdown, probably. Here's my thing. The, the I know, thing is, I know. We got, what's going on with Willie right now? I know right? a lot we of people are talking about that. Willie, but Willie has a little bit more money tied to him to where if you want to include that in into a deal, 
into a trade like that that is an extra four million dollars that helped you get to a salary number compared to Moses. What matters more though, the potential of Moses Brown in a trade, like his potential as a player that a team could look at and go, Oh, we could fix him. Right. We could, we could take him and make him the player we that he can be. Him. Right. Like we can rebuild him or the extra, the couple extra million dollars. Was it like 2 million extra dollars in a, in a will it call Stein deal compared to Moses Brown's deal? Like I think the potential of Moses in a deal is better than the extra $2 million that in, uh, Willie Colley Stein's contract. Yeah, Willie uh Willie makes four point one. Moses makes one point seven. He has Moses has one point eight guaranteed for next year and then non guaranteed after that for round two. So it's just all I'm trying to say is it if they had to waive one player, it is cheaper for them to waive Moses than it is to waive Willie. So that's all I'm trying to like I wouldn't be shocked if we're, you know, January eighth. And they're saying, hey, the Mavericks have waived Moses Brown and signed Marquise Chris to the rest of the season deal or something like that. That would be really weird. But yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, the Utah Jazz on the Mavericks are playing the Utah Jazz on Christmas Day uh, for the game that the Jazz played tonight on uh, t- Thursday night. They only had four guys on their um, <laughs> on their injury report and none of them because of health and safety protocols. Wow, they're staying clear. As far as far as what this injury report says, they're staying clear, and uh, yeah, so it could be uh, it could be quite a slaughter. <laughs> so we're gonna be on Gilbert versus uh, Gilbert versus KP that night. There was also something that Devin said on the on the broadcast. I know it's a super random, but it just came to my yeah. mind. They had their full complement of players against the the Timberwolves in this game tonight. Oh, that's encouraging. Um, <laughs> he 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 comped Brunson to Tony Parker. And that's at, a really good one. He's not as first, fast, but yeah. Yeah. At first I was like, okay, that's kind of lofty. Like Tony was a hall of famer. And now then I started thinking about it. I'm like, all right, there are some craftiness parts of the game. Like the, it was, he was talking about the mid range yeah. stuff and craftiness around the basket and all of that. And, you know, it's not like they were just, you know, snipers from outside and just super smart point guards. And anyway, I just wanted to, he said that on broadcast. I thought about it for way longer than what I thought, and I just never thought about that name in regards to like Brunson ceiling one day. Yeah, it's like the stop and start ability, right? The ball handling. It's the finishing around the rim when you're like the play. He's he's not like Parker was really quick, and he's but he's not always like flying by guys to get to the rim. He he used a little bit of that savviness that Brunson uses. That's a pretty interesting comp. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. So there you go. Christmas Day, we will have a podcast post game. After that, um, that game, no matter what, after happened. Santa comes, now we have to see. We don't even know what Santa is going to bring us. <laughs> I may have done Santa may have come to my house already, and I may have gotten these AirPods. But yeah, whoa, <laughs> flex on us. Okay, <laughs> let us know what Santa's bringing you in the YouTube comments, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On Mavs. Merry Christmas, guys. Peace out. <laughs> Happy holidays. Peace out. Boom.